Hey kids, it is the day after yesterday, which is the day I posted last. Now I'm still sick, but uh, I'm feeling a little better. Haven't shaved. I need to do that tonight. My brother's birthday party tomorrow, so I should be presentable and hopefully feel a little better by the time I go out there. Um, this is a short one. Not so much a troubleshooting as uh, an introductory for a lot of you new guys who probably have never run across these. And um, you will eventually, and they're difficult troubleshoot sometimes. And what I'm talking about is uh, on a gas furnace, on a modern gas furnace, normally um, the ignition sequence of a hot surface igniter is controlled by the the fan control board, furnace board, whatever you want to call it. But on a small number of them, and I, hopefully they're eliminating them more and more as we go, or improving them, they have what they call smart valves. And the smart valve um, decides when the ignition sequence goes and, and it has a control circuit board on it and it turns the, the hot surface element on and off and, and determines whether or not uh, the safety sequence is going. So anyway, let me cut the, the chatter and I will show you uh, the valve in question here. Let's see if I can get the camera aimed in here on it a little bit. This is a uh, it's just a Honeywell valve, and I mean, there's other brands of them too, I think, but it's it's what they call a smart valve, and uh, it has a control tab here, has four plugs that go here, and it has the ignition plug set here, uh, which has four, and this one just has an on and off. Some of them have a push button, I think, uh, and I have a cat apparently in my lap. This one has a grounding tab. Uh, some of the newer ones don't have grounding tabs. They just uh, expect you to put the ground wire on the, uh, the furnace burner assembly, which does it. The, uh, the igniter looks absolutely nothing like normal hot surface igniter you're looking normally see. This one has, and I hate these, uh, so if you're calling to, to see if they have one in stock, tell them if you're, if you're calling to order one of these or have them hold one on call for you, will call for you, you tell them it's for a smart valve, it's the little two blue wire thingy, they'll know. And it has the four pins, only three of them are being used. And two of them are for the, the igniter, and one is for the flame sensor. The flame sensor is, look how tiny that igniter is compared to uh, other ones. Now the plus side of the igniter is it typically lasts a lot longer than some of the larger ones because as uh, one of the guys was posting on yesterday, I can't remember if it was put some stank on it or or who, but uh, was saying the larger ones take longer to heat up and longer to cool down so there's more stress on them. This sucker heats up and cools down quick. The problem it has a few issues that I don't like. One is if the flame uh, sensor gets dirty it's a lot harder to get these out sometimes depending on where they install these uh, and get and then you're trying to clean this flame sensor with some uh, steel wool without cracking that uh, I mean it's really easy to touch that and jack it up they have little clips uh, this slides into a little hold slot and it's got a little clip thing here that slides on and holds this into your assembly and I don't have assembly but you can probably google it and look it up and the, uh, of course, this just plugs into the top of the valve here, like so. And then the control four port goes to the uh, furnace control board. Now, the, uh, hang on, let me pause for just a second here. Sorry, my ham radio was going to town. They never talk when I'm bored and listening, but as soon as you start doing something. But anyway, these are kind of hard to troubleshoot sometimes because, uh... The first couple that I troubleshoot, I was pulling my hair out. You'd go out there, it would start, it would, uh, it started run and shut off, start run and shut off. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got a pressure problem, I've got a vacuum leak problem, I've got something blocking my, my, uh, 
pressure switch or something else. And it, it's not the case a lot of times. The, these things got little circuit boards in here. And I think they develop cracks is what happens. And it will decide at random whether or not it wants to uh, acknowledge the existence of it. Now this particular one came off. I don't remember what brand it was. Mounted, uh, mounted up in the furnace like this. And it was just like this, and, the, and the, the assembly was over here like so. And uh, the complaint from the homeowner was it would, he could hear it start getting cycle up, and it would go and go and go, and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And I, I went up there and fired off like four or five times in a row. And then he said, well, Mike, maybe I'm not describing it clearly. Sometimes you can hear it try and try and try, and then you hear a whoomp into the light, and... Uh, and it'll run for a while the next time I won't like oh well that's a different story so I went up there and I'm looking I'm still not my brain wasn't catching on because I, I run across these so seldom I thought well just for kicks let's look at the other furnace so I pulled the cover off his other furnace and I ran it through a cycle and uh, of course you're tired you miss things sometimes this actually if you will note has a has a pilot uh, tube assembly right here meaning it, it doesn't have a standing pilot, obviously, because it's hot surface ignition, but your most hot surface igniter furnaces don't have a pilot at all you fool with. You just you learn, you ignite the hot surface, you wait 30 seconds or however long, it turns the gas on, and boom, you're going. Well, what was happening was something's wrong in the sequencing on this thing. It was cutting on, uh, the igniter was coming on, and the igniter was coming on the exact same time the gas was coming on. In other words, it wasn't turning the pilot on, lighting the pilot, waiting to see that the flame sense had proven that the pilot was on, and then lighting the burner assembly. It was just lighting the whole burner assembly. And I didn't catch it right off because I just didn't catch it right off. And I watched the other one and saw what was going on. And uh, we shut it off, and I wound up having to get a new gas valve and solve the problem. But so apparently the safeties are not overly safe on it. That's why I don't like these. I'd just rather have regular hot surface ignition. Uh, I'm not fond of electronic spark ignition. That's a whole another ball game. This is a lot easier to troubleshoot on a regular hot surface ignition as opposed to spark ignition. But I hate these because usually when you have a malfunction. It's, you got to change the valve, and it's just, I hate changing gas valves. I don't know why. It doesn't take a horribly amount of long time. It just, uh, and it probably helped if I had a, a clamp on the back of the truck I could tighten stuff up in, but but I hate changing gas valves. So, but, uh, so these, uh, I won't tell you what I call these, you can guess, but anyway, I want to familiarize you with uh, the smart valve, and uh, so you know what you're looking at when you run across them. Anyway, that's enough for this. Uh, I'm sure we might be able to get some of the other guys to post, some of the old timers uh, who've run across more issues with these. But that's the two biggest problems. I have either intermittent because the, the board in here has got a crack or trace problem with it, or in this case, it was out of sequence. Something's going on goofy and it wasn't lighting the pilot and it was lighting the, the whole thing at the same time as it was lighting the gas assembly at the same time it was lighting the hot surface igniter. Um, so there you go. And uh, that's it for this one, and I'll see what I can dig up next. Thanks.